उत्पादस्थिति भंगानम् अन्यत् संस्कृत लक्षणम् अस्ति चेदाना वस्तायिवम् नास्ति चेतना संस्कृता MMK chapter 7 verse 3 If a different order of targeting of contrivance is present in going up, staying still and cessation, in this way there is non-finality. If no targeting is present, they are not contrived. So uh, I've translated that one following the the real meaning. When I was translating Astagosa, every day I would write, on the surface this means blah blah blah, below the surface what Astagosa might be suggesting is such and such. But when, now I come to look at Nagarjuna, I almost don't feel like doing it like that, because I'm I feel what he's really saying is not what he's saying on the surface. What he's saying on the surface has to do with ontology, has to do with the existence and non-existence of things. And we'll explore that maybe later on. But There's a Japanese proverb, Iso gaba maware. If you're in a hurry, go round. Take the indirect route. And uh, if I say that I'm impatient by nature, that goes against the teaching of emptiness because the teaching of emptiness says I don't have my own nature. I'm, I'm empty of uh, self existence. I'm empty of svabhava, self nature. Uh, but on the level of conventional truth, my wife often reminds me how extremely I'm impatient I am and how much she regrets marrying somebody who's just like her father because he's also in Japanese kiga mijikai it means your your key is short your key your temper is short impatient kiga mijikai so perhaps it's because of that impatient tendency that I found it 30 years, more than 30 years, found a kind of salvation in, in uh, impatiently practicing the backward step, sort of being in a hurry to get to the Zafu, where I can practice the backward step, because uh, impatience is always wanting to sort of go forward, see the next thing, hit the next target, accomplish the next goal, uh, somewhat in the manner of a bulldozer. As I was described in a previous life. So the backward step is is dropping that off and uh, being less direct. Marjorie Barlow used to talk about the indirect principle, and she used to not only preach it, she used to practice it. Uh, so whether, whether that guided me or not, I was recommended to study MMK back in the early 90s by. Udo Nishijima, and uh, haven't got round to it until about five years ago, 2014. Um, my attention was drawn to those two verses in chapter 26 in particular. Samsara mulam samskaran avidvan samskarotyata avidvan karakastasman navidvam statvadarshana. Abhidhyayam nirudayam samskara nama sambhava Abhidhyaya nirodastu jnana syasyaiva bhavana Samsara mulam samskara The samskaras, the contrivances which are the root of samsara Abhidvan samskarotyata Thus does the ignorant one contrive 
avid van caracas tasman therefore the ignorant one is the doer that's what alerts you to the importance of those verses someone who's interested in non-doing avid van caracas tasman navid van statvadarshanat not the wise one because of looking into what is but because of reality being realized in the stopping of ignorance when ignorance when ignorance is being stopped there is a non coming into being of samskaras there is a non coming into being of doings contrivings Avidyaya niroda stu, but the stopping of ignorance. Jnana jnana bhavanat is through the cultivation of just this understanding or understanding of just this. So that was five years ago I started there translating those verses and there. Uh, I'm glad that it's taken the time it's taken before I, I still haven't put anything in, in print. And, um, I spent nearly 10 years doing Astral epic poems at the rate of one verse per day. And that was like deliberately imposing on my impatient self a snail's pace. I described it in my introduction when I eventually published the, uh, the finished product, Mining Ashwagosha's Gold here, available on, on Lulu, if anybody's interested, or you can find it online. Uh, in my introduction, I, I began my introduction by saying, talking about the therapeutic snail's pace of one verse per day. Here we are. For, for the last seven years, at the therapeutic snail's pace of one verse per day, I have been translating two works of Asphagosha, known in Sanskrit as Maha Kavya, epic poems or epic tales. So I wrote that in uh, wrote that in September to October 2015, Champs well, Secret France, where I am now, Champs Secret France, and Aylesbury in uh, September to October 2015. So that was that was four years ago, and a bit. Uh, so I started that in 2008, and I don't know what guided me to start it. Because see, if I'd been going directly for the target, I would have gone straight to Nagarjuna. But something told me, "Isogaba Maware." If you're in a hurry to clarify what Nagarjuna said. Go back, one step further back, to Asphagosa. And uh, I think the reason I knew about Asphagosa was I, again, something told me to find this book. The, before I started so studying Sanskrit in earnest, I got this book, The Literary History of Sanskrit Buddhism. And, and from that, I learned that Asphagosa was revered as a great poet on a par with Kalidasha, sort of the Shakespeare of Sanskrit, Kalidasa. But some people think Ashtagosa was uh, equally great. And uh, I read that he had these two epic poems that were still excellent in Sanskrit. And uh, they were the first things written. It's the first things really written in classical Sanskrit by a, certainly by a Buddhist patriarch in the, in the lineage going back to the Buddha. So that was great preparation for studying Nagarjuna, not least because reading Astagosa is a, is a lesson in looking for what meaning is below the surface. So I've translated, I've translated this verse in a way that no one else will have translated it because they haven't been looking, they haven't been looking for the hidden meaning. So here it is from the English. If is check a different order anyat. So anyat it means 
other or different. But again, Asphagosa. If you want to understand the word Anya, read Asphagosa, especially his description of women who are Anya feminine. Women who are different are this, like for example, uh, when they're trying to seduce the Buddha uh, out in the park, and this beautiful women have been sent by the king to seduce the Buddha, or sedu seduce the young prince and bring him back to the palace. Uh, like for example, he'll say something like Anya, another another woman, uh, whispered in his ear, in his ear, let the secret be revealed. So it sounds like she's talking about, you know, seducing him. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's kind of like a double entendre, but the other way. Ostensibly, it's about sex, but below the surface, he's talking about what she represents is Hibutsu in Shobogenzo. Hibutsu means a non-Buddha, so it means a real Buddha who's different from what we think a Buddha is. And that difference is expressed by Asfagosa as Anya, being different. So it's the same here. So Anya means a different order of, so Anya is a, a nominative, neuter, singular, agreeing with Samskrita Lakshanam. So Samskrita Lakshanam means targeting of contrivance. Contriving or contrivance Samskrita, we considered yesterday, and Lakshana, one of its meanings is targeting, or aiming to hit a mark. Its ostensible meaning, its first meaning, is a mark, but it also has the sense of aiming to hit a mark, so targeting. So Anyat Samskrita Lakshanam means a different, different targeting of contrivance, a different order of targeting of contrivance. I've translated that, tra translated it as. So ostensibly, if you read previous translations, that it means something like extraneous demarcation of Samskrit, Samskrita. So they'll say extraneous demarcation of the conditioned or the created or something like that. So I, I haven't got a, uh, another translation to hand, but if that's what it'll be translated as. Anya meaning uh, extraneous, additional, and then characterizing of Samskrita. So the ostensible meaning would be something like well, it's of what? It's of Utpada Stiti Banganam, Genesis plural. So of Genesis, Stasis, and Dissolution. Okay, so I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm straying onto the ostensible meaning, but for the sake of clarification, Utpada Stiti Banganam, Genesis plural, of Genesis, Stasis, and Dissolution. So if there's extraneous demarcation, or if there's extraneous characterization of the contrived, of, so genesis plural, of or in genesis, stasis, and dissolution, there is, in this way, or thus, evam, anav, anavasta. So anavasta, we discussed yesterday, means in philosophy an infinite regression, like in a hall of mirrors. One mirror reflects another mirror, which reflects in the mirror, which reflects, so it goes on and on, like an infinite regression. So if there's extraneous demarcation of the contrived in genesis, status, and dissolution, then there's a... There's, uh, demarcation, uh, a characteristic of a characteristic of a characteristic, that, that's the argument for infinite regression. So it's an ontological proposition that, that Nagarjuna is making on the surface, but 
I don't think he's interested in ontology whatsoever. We've already saw, seen that in the first two verses. He, left to his own devices, Nagarjuna would just be manifesting the truth of practice, not talking about about uh, ontology. What is not having philosophical discussion about existence and non-existence. The reason the Buddha spoke about existence and non-existence is to clarify the meaning of practice in the middle way, pratitya samutpada. And similarly, in this chapter, as I read it, Nagarjuna does not touch on ontology until verse 5, after the opponent, sounding very much like Jay Garfield, has piped up in verse 4, which we'll get to in a minute. So the way I read the chapter, the first three verses are all about practice. They only seem to be about ontology. So, from the English again, if, uh, chet, a different order, anyat, of targeting of contrivance, samskrita lakshanam, is present, asti, in going up, staying still, and cessation, utpadastiti banganam, in this way, evam, there is anavasta. So, anavasta means not being settled not being certain, non-finality. If a different order of targeting of contrivance is present in going up, staying still and cessation, in this way there is non-finality. So what he's, what he's describing there is Alexander Directions. A direction is nothing final. Let the head go forward and up. There's nothing final about that. It's a direction. Uh, so how is that targeting of contrivance? Well, it's, it's a different order of targeting of contrivance. So if, you, if, contriv if contrivance means doings, as conceived in Alexander work, the habitual method of targeting is, is like, let's have a war on terror, let's have a war on drugs, let's have a war on ignorance. This is prapancha. That is the enemy. Drugs, terror, Islamism, doings. So the enemy in Alexander work is doings. Doings born of ignorance. I'm guilty. I'm, sp I'm speaking about myself here. That's exactly how I went about it. When I realised the enemy was doings, or the enemy was samskaras. That's how the end gaining mind responds to it. Okay, let's get after those bastard doings and totally annihilate them. They're the enemy. So that would be the, the habitual order of targeting of contrivance. What he's talking about here is anyat, a more conscious, more enlightened, more indirect response to targeting of contrivance. So what does Marjorie what did Marjorie Bowler tell me? If you feel you're wrong, if you feel you're wrong, you inveterate warrior. If you feel you, if you feel you're wrong, say no. That means say no to trying to be right. Most of all, say no to giving. Say no to trying to do the directions as well. Think head forward, no, but don't try and do it. And then say no to going out and doing the horse manure. Don't be in a hurry even to do that. You only want to gain your end in the process of letting the neck be free, to let the head go forward and up, to let the back lengthen and widen while setting the knees forwards and away. Practice and practice and practice that. Saying no, giving directions, and then go into movement without a care in the world. Let it come out in the wash. That is a different order of targeting of contrivance. See, it's not, it's not trying to destroy the wrong stuff. It's letting it come out in the wash. In fact, it echoes very much what Master Dogen uh, wrote about in Ch Shobogenzo chapter 73, Sanju Shichi Bodai Bumbo, 
73, uh, Sanju shoots with 37, Wings of Bodhi, or 37 things on the side of awakening. That's how Ananda Jyoti Bhikkhu translates it, which is, a, as usual, pretty accurate. 37 things on the side of awakening. So in that, one of the, th the things is there the reflection that bodies are impure. And so Master Dogen's reflection on that was what happens when you're washing dirty clothes. So you, you put your dirty clothes in the water, and the water gets dirty, at which point you don't immediately throw the water away, but you continue washing your dirty clothes in dirty water. That's, that's how you let things come out in the wash. It's, it's, it has a sense of indirectness about it, doesn't it? It's not, it's not that there's an absolute pure thing called water and absolute dirty things called clothes. Actually, when you go into action, the water gets dirty, but you carry on using it to wash the clothes. It's a bit like my phrase, gold face and red face, we wash them the same. That, that emerged from that kind of teaching, of reading that kind of teaching in, in Master Dogen's uh, Shorborgenzo. So if a different order of targeting of contrivance, Anya Samskrita Lakshanam, is present, Asti, in going up, staying still and cessation, Utpadastiti Banganam, in this way, Evam, there is non-finality, Anavasta. So, Anavasta plus Evam goes to Anavastaivam, Utpada stiti banganam anyat samskrita lakshanam, asti ched anavastaivam. So, uh, if I work from the Sanskrit and give both the ostensible and real meaning, Utpada stiti banganam, of going up, staying still, and cessation. So, in the real meaning, going up, staying still, and cessation are, as we saw in the previous verse, samasta, united. They're, they're not different things. Okay, so going up, if you sit in full lotus and go up, that is staying still. That is stillness. And it's also cessation of samskaras, but it's cessation of anything, it's, 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 it's the non-coming into being of samskaras, as samskaranam asambhavaha, so it's utpada, it's going up, it's not pulling the head back and down like that, it's not letting the head slump forward and down like that, it's letting the head go forward and up, not forward and down, forward and up. Nothing you can do, but it's pratitya samutpada. The going up is dependent, it's dependently arisen. It's dependent on breakfast, dependent on gravity, dependent on azafu. Most of all, it's dependent on the teaching of the middle way. Stiti, staying still, that isn't difficult, is it? If you're, thinking, if you're thinking it's an expression of sitting in lotus, going up and staying still are obviously not contradictory to somebody who's, who's sitting in lotus and uh, letting the head go forward and up. Letting the head go forward and up is not a movement, it's a direction that doesn't stop you from being still, even though it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic thing. It's dynamic in stillness, like a steel yard, Master Dogen said. If you want to study stillness or, or balance, study a steel yard. It's still, stillness without fixity. And then Banganam, because it, Banganam means breaking up, dissolution, cessation. It's, it's really breaking up of the chain of dependent arising of suffering. We can say it's the non-coming into being of samskaras, which is the second link. We could also say it's the, it's the letting go of upadana, a 
attachment or clinging. You could say it's the dropping off of body and mind, nama rupa. Okay, so tasya tasya nirodena tatana vi pravartate dukas kanda ke valoyam evam samya nirudyate. That's the concluding verse of uh, chapter 26. Tasya, tasya, nirodena. By the cessation of this one and that one. It could be tasya, tasya, banganena. By the breaking up, by the dissolution of this one and that one. Tas, tat, tat, nabi, bravartate. This one and that one no longer advance. Dukas, ganda, ke valoyam. The whole aggregate of suffering in this way. Dukas, ganda, ke valoyam. This I am. This whole ke valoyam. This whole aggregate of suffering. Ewam, samya, nirudyate. Ewam, samyak, nirudyate. Thus, Ewam, in this way, Samyak, well and truly, completely, Nirudyate, is ceased, is destroyed. So it means the same as, in that, in that verse, Niroda means the same as Banga, I'm suggesting. What he's talking about, Utparastiti Banga, is the whole point of sitting in lotus, going up, staying still, and by that method, which is inherently, in Master Dogen's words, mui asamskrita, by that method, stopping samskaras, let, letting there be a non-coming into being of samskaras. In other words, that's banga, cessation. Okay, so... If in our practice of going up, staying still and cessation, in other words, in our practice of zazen, sitting meditation, just sitting, if in our practice of just sitting, the different order of targeting of contrivance is present. That's what Marjorie Barlow taught me. A different order of targeting of contrivance. That's why I'm glad it's taken me so long to get to this point of being able to say the real meaning of this verse. Because I couldn't have done it without the input of Alexander teachers or without having studied Astagorsa and being alerted to the hidden meaning. If you're not alerted to the hidden meaning, it means something like this. If extraneous demarcation, so if chet, extraneous demarcation, extraneous anya, demarcation of the contrived, samskrita lakshanam, is present, aski, in genesis, stasis and dissolution, utpadastiti banganam, thus, ewam, there is an infinite regression, anavis, anavasta, Okay, so infinite regression is how it was translated by Jay Garfield, David Kalupahana, uh, and Sideris and Katsura. They all had infinite regression. Okay, so, so infinite regression is something in ontology, in, ontolo in philosophical discussion. Okay, it's a kind of logical proposition. If a, if a is contained in A, which is contained in A, which is contained in A, it just goes on forever, an infinite regression. It's, it's, it's philosophically of interest to ontologists. It's not really of interest to the Zazen practitioner, is it? I don't see how it's relevant. Then the fourth pada. If no targeting is present, if no targeting is present, they are not contrived. So they is te, which nominative uh, masculine plural of tat. Tat means that. Te means those. They. So in this case, they means uh, uh, 
Utpadastitibanga, because that's the that's the plural element of the previous part of the verse. So they are not contrived. Na samskritaha, samskritaha nominative, plural masculine. So te na samskritaha, they are not contrived. So we're looking at how going up, staying still, and cessation are not contrived. Okay, so what's the condition for that? Nasty chet. So chet if na asti not present. If there is not. So if no is present, they are not contrived. And what's in the square brackets is targeting, I think. If no targeting is present, they are not contrived. If chet, non is present, nasty, they are not contrived. Te na samskritaha. So the important element that's understood is targeting. If no targeting is present, they are not contrived. So what what he's taught what he's suggesting there is the progression that you we find as I often refer to in the Maha Satipatthana Sutta the section on breathing. So Maha Satipatthana Sutta means a uh, the, su the, the sutra, uh, the great sutra on the abodes of mindfulness and uh, the section on breathing, as you've heard me recite many times. First of all, first of the very, uh, I don't usually mention it, but it, it's, it, it's worth coming back to. The, the very f beginning of it, the Buddha says, a big shoe goes to the foot of a tree or to a quiet place, to an empty space, and sits Urjum Kayam Panidaya. So Urjum means tending upward, tending upward. Kayam the body, Panidaya, sort of putting, so it's, it means sort of orienting the body upwards. First of all, you sit in full lotus and you orient the body upwards. So that's the first thing. It's the same as Utpada in this verse. Okay, that's the first thing. And, and, and in this way, you establish mindfulness at, to the fore. So the way of establishing mindfulness in the first instance is to sit upright. That, that shouldn't be passed over. You know, in, in the Sutta, mindfulness is not in the context of... Uh, everything in everyday life. It's you go to a quiet place, sit in lotus, and, t and, and, and orient the body upwards. That's how you establish mindfulness to the full. Then the first, the first thing is you just leave your breathing alone. You let a long breath be long and let a short breath be short. So there's no, it's saying no to trying to change anything actually. It corresponds exactly to saying no. Yeah. In Alexander work and in this verse it's stitty banga in other words keeping still not fidgeting about trying to change things just just being just sitting and banga that's saying no it, it, it's it's giving up that the mind what is it called in Fukuhan Zazen the shin no unten the, the momentum of the mind uh, so that Mindfulness of breathing is sometimes a misnomer. It's it's uh, it's really mindfulness of stopping, and then so you're not concentrating on your breathing. You're more just watching it. I wouldn't say looking at it even. It's more more watching it as you watch something out of the corner of your eye, not concentrating. So then the next stage is. Sabakaya pati samvedi asasi samiti sikati. With the whole body informed with targeting, I will breathe in. 
with the whole body in form with direction. So that's my interpretive translation. You see, it's, it's in Alexander's sense, inhibiting and directing. Inhibiting is letting your breathing alone, letting a long breath be short, letting, letting a long breath be long, letting a short breath be short. Then the next stage, because naturally, you, after a while of that, you want to you want to move on or move back. So savakaya, the whole body, pati sam vedi, prati back sam together, integral, integrally, vedi away. So being coming back reflectively, integrally aware of the whole body, or with the whole body being reflectively, integrally aware, something like that. I will breathe in. So there's your target. You see, that's targeting. Lakshana. I will breathe in. You're looking, it's, a, it's a target for the future. I will breathe in. I will breathe out. Asasisami. Pasasisami. I will breathe in. I will breathe out. With a body, the whole body, Sabakaya, Patisamvedi, informed with thought, if I borrow Marjorie Barlow's phrase. So with the whole body in form with thought, I will breathe in, I will breathe out. That is Lakshana. That's aiming, that's, that's targeting something. You're targeting an in-breath and an out-breath with Sabakaya Pati Samvedi, the whole body in form with thought. It's not, this is something I, I recognised ex post, you know, I didn't start studying the Mindfulness Sutra in, in, in Pali uh, until a few years ago. I'd already been practicing, so it, the Mindfulness Sutra just exactly described the process of anybody who sits in lotus following the principles of the Alexander Technique. That's what you want. You want your whole body. Well, say the principles of the Alexander Technique and for many years, you see, I had a hiatus of, of doing translation work, which then, after Nishijima Sensei stopped me working on Shobogenzo before I got to the finishing line, for which I'm eternally grateful. Thanks very much. No, I'm not actually. I've, I, I continue to resent resent that bitterly. Uh, perhaps less so having get to the, gotten to the finishing line of this and realising that getting to the finishing line isn't so important. But in order to realise that getting to the finishing line is not so important, it really helps to get to the finishing line. It doesn't help if somebody stops you before you've got to the finishing line together. I remember Nishijima Sensei once told me that Mike Latchford had told him that he realised that from climbing mountains that the state at the top of the mountain was the same as the state at the bottom of the mountain, which might be true. But in order to realise that, you have to get to the top of the mountain. I'd rather, I'd rather experience that for myself than take somebody's word for it. So in, in that hiatus of a period of 10 years between, uh, it was 1997, where Nishijima Sensei stopped me working on Shobogenzo, and uh, 2008, when I got back into translation, he started make, making the decision that I would... Uh, study Sanskrit and, and uh, plough a lonely furrow. In those 10 years, the, o the only work that I actually translated was Shinji Shobogenzo, uh, Shinji Fugan sorry, Fuganza Zengi Shin Pitsu Bon, which means uh, Fuganza Zengi, the, the rules of sitting med meditation recommended for everybody. Shin Pitsu Bon means original brush edition or the true brush edition. Shin, true, original, pizza, pizza is brush, and bon, edition. And so that is the one written in Master Dogen's own hand. Uh, I've got the, the scroll of it up there on the wall above me. It was donated, that scroll was donated to me by Mochizuki-san of all he called in Shizuka, uh, Shizuoka, when I went to visit him to say goodbye in uh, 1994, uh, he just quite spontaneously brought out his treasure, his, his facsimile of scroll there and, uh, and gave that to me as a goodbye present. I always remember that, it was a great deal of uh, 
fondness and gratitude. So I'm, I translated that and, and put it on my website. And as well as studying that, translating that, I, uh, I used to very regularly recite the Kanzazengi Rufuvon, the, 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 the finished version. In Shinpitsubon, Master Dogen says, Jijo Ipen, G naturally, spontaneously, Jo become Ipen, one piece. So that is corresponds to what Alexander called employment, employing the primary control well. Primary control is what a word Alexander used for a use of the head in relation to the the whole of the rep, how you use your head really uh, in relation to the body and how you use your body in relation to the head uh, it's very difficult to define what what you meant by the primary control but the criteria for it was using yourself as a whole and so uh, it relates very much to what Master Dogen spoke about the samadhi of accepting and using yourself and uh, pen naturally becoming one piece so that's the target in a way and uh, in a way that's the target but uh, in a way the target is what's what gets in the way of being one piece which is samskaras like or, or you could say yeah uh, Namarupa, the, the contriving body and mind as separate things. So, in a sense, let the neck be free to let the head go forward and up, to let the back lengthen and widen, sending these forwards and away. It's, it's targeting of oneness, or you could say it's targeting of contrivance, contrivance, but it's a different order of targeting of contrivance. It's sort of direction is the truest form of inhibition by by targeting a whole the whole body being informed with thought so sabakaya means the whole body or the whole self the whole person the whole body mind by targeting that situation that's what madhuribala would do on her teaching table the target would be the whole body informed with thought but put it another way the target was non-doing. The target was, Marjorie said, the wrong inner patterns are the doing which must be stopped. So the stopping of doing is the targeting of oneness, or it's the targeting of Utpadastiti Banga, the targeting of going up, staying still, and cessation of samskaras. So in in this way, there is non-finality. There is a true direction, which is different from finality. But then he says, if no targeting is present, if no, square brackets, targeting is present, they are not contrived. So what that means is, Pasambayam kaya sankara and asasi sami tisikati. One trains oneself thinking, I will breathe in, asasi sami, I will breathe out, pasasi sami. Pasambayam, allowing to cease, causing to cease, kaya sankara, the samskara of a body. Okay, so that's the next stage. That's in Zen terms, dropping off body and mind. So the first intermediate stage is you want the whole body informed with thought. But the next stage is Madhuri says, move your leg. And you say, no, I'm not going to move the leg. I'm, I, I, I'm not interested in doing the movement. I want my whole body to be informed with thought. And Madhuri says again, move the leg. No, no I'm not going to react to that. I wish the whole body to be informed with thought. The Madhuri say, we feel you can't move your leg. I'm not falling for that trick either, Madhuri. 
neck free, head forward and up, back to lengthen and widen, knees forward and away. In order to move the leg, and I move the leg. And Marjorie says, Yes, that's, you know, that, that, then, then you might get the praise. Because the point working on yourself is you've got to make the movement. It's not working on yourself if you don't make the movement. It's about acting in the air. Okay, and that is when you move the leg, when you're actually going into movement, or you've been practicing Zazen for an hour and you have your breakfast and you go out and shovel a sodding compost, that's when no targeting is present. Alexander said, we get it in movement, let it come out in the wash. It's when you go into movement, that's when no targeting is present. Then they are not contrived. Then Utpada Stiti Banga, going up, staying still, and cessation are not contrived. So it's not about going around 24 hours a day inhibiting and giving directions. That that's the preparatory work, which is the most important thing. Otherwise your life is just running around endgame, just doing blindly. So it's like Zazen is the most important thing, to put it that way. But that doesn't mean that your life is going to maximize the number of hours on the Zafu. Sampra vritisha nivritisha. There are there is going forward, stepping forward, nivritisha, there is stepping back. They're both important. So that's what that's why I was saying I'm glad I've taken so long to get round to doing this verse. So, especially the last two years, I just intuited that in order to really dig deeply into MMK, I wanted to come to France and live this kind of simple life in France. And see, last last year when I was making my uh, renovating the shed over there and, and making the greenhouse. My friend Brian, who would often go go walking and see the donkeys, would, he'd say, Mike, you're always working, you're always working. <laughs> you know, go and watch TV or something, you know, because whenever he walked past, I'd, I'd be out working. So he, he wouldn't think that I was somebody who practiced as in a lot. He'd think I was a sort of workaholic. But... Uh, I wanted, I wanted that experience of doing practical work, not teaching Alexander technique, not doing the reflex work, but doing real physical work, you know. So I'm not being precious about my Alexander hands, which I'd be afraid to put on anybody at the moment, because I, you know, I even built a, a Makiwara last year to really take, take, you know, go further in that direction. So a Makiwara is a, an Okinawan punching board. So I just got back into doing that Makiwara training. I haven't done it for since the winter came in because I built it out at the end of the garden. But uh, I just wanted to get back into the physical, which 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 I did, and uh, it relates to this fourth para. Nasti chetena samskritaha. If no targeting is present, they are not contrived. Because I always felt. I wasn't somehow being true to myself as an Alexander Technique teacher. I like to be out in the bloody nature, you know, and uh, I'm not awfully keen on, on on dealing with people. You know, I'm much much happier with you know, saying hello to my uh, horse friends over there as I shovel their manure and uh, reciting reciting these uh, these verses out out in nature with nobody to bother me. Uh, so that's the basis for, for me understanding nasty chetena samskritaha in that way. If no targeting is present, they are not contrived. So targeting is super important, but it's a stage on the way to no targeting. No body, no mind, no understanding, no wisdom just happenings which are empty of self-existence. I wrote that down already, so that was probably a bit contrived.
I also wrote down to remind myself Drashtavyopashamam Shivam happiness as the cessation of the to be seen. So that's another expression of no targeting is present. If no targeting is present, then going up, staying still and cessation are not contrived. Na Samskritaha. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Avidyayam nirudayam samskaranam asambhavaha. Where ignorance is being stopped, there is a non-coming into being of samskaras. That is the point. Utpada stiti banganam anyat samskrita lakshanam asti chedana vastaivam nasti chetena samskritaha is the ostensible meaning. If extraneous demarcation of the contrived is present in genesis, stasis and dissolution, there is thus an infinite regression. If no mark is present, they are not contrived. And here's what it really means. If a different order of targeting of contrivance is present in going up, staying still and cessation, in this way there is non-finality. And if no targeting is present, they, that's going up, staying still and cessation, are not contrived. So I think of not contriving anything, then I ask myself what kind, what kind of non-coming into being of samskaras am I contriving? Utpadasthiti bhanganam anyat samskrita lakshanam asti chetana vasthaivam nasti chetena samskritaha